Greetings! It is I, Countess Narvan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on the Earth Dawn role-playing game system. Well, where we last left off, we of course were beginning to talk about combat. Let's dive deeper into combat. So combat itself is divided in a series of time. These rounds of time are referred to as a series of turns. These turns are referred to as combat rounds or just rounds for short. Each round is about six seconds. And the real point of this is to come up with a basic time scale for everything. This way I'm dividing up all the amount of time I'm going in. I can figure out how many rounds there is in each duration based upon minutes. Things like this that make it easy to break down combat based into time itself. During this round, the character will do a number of things. It can be performing a simple task, using a skill, attacking with a weapon, casting a spell. Each of these is effectively an action that a character can do. And over the course of trying to be successful or even possibly trying to be successful, maybe failing at whatever action they're attempting to do, they require one or more actual tests to roll out during the course of it. This could be something like rolling initiative, it could be making the attack roll, it could be rolling the damage test. All of these various tests that they're going to roll are going to help determine the success or failure or how much successful something might be along the way of the course of this action and the turn they're taking, the round they're taking. Effectively, there's a basic list of things your characters are going to do in the course of the turn. There's a basic sequence they're going to follow that along the way they will make one or more tests to it. First off, they're going to declare an action that they're going to take. Once they've declared that, then every player will roll for their initiative test. Then all the actions will be resolved, and then a new round of combat will begin. Now, all the rules I'm going to be going over in the course of combat apply to everything player characters, GM characters, and creatures. There are sometimes exceptions to these rules that make one of these groups not be included in one of these rules. It will be stated with that rule. If this only applies to player characters, if it only applies to GM characters, or if it only applies to creatures, the rule itself will state that. There are a few exceptions that do focus on one or more of these alone and not all of them, but Figure majority will be all of them. So let's dive a little bit more into those four steps you're going to be doing in the course of the term. First off, declaring your action. This is actually very simple. I am not declaring all the details of my action. I'm declaring the basics of my action. I'm casting a spell. I'm making an attack. I'm using a skill. I'm doing the very, I'm using a talent. These are the very basics of what I am doing and I am declaring them at this point in time. This is the general kind of action I want to take over the course of this turn. The exact details of it I have not determined as of yet. So then each round all the participants in combat will roll an initiative test. Now this test and its step can of course be modified by many different things from things like your armor to maybe items you have on you to abilities and talents that you have that might modify your step overall when you're making this test. Your step can never be reduced below one voluntarily. Now there are things that could drive it there not voluntarily like if you have armor that misses with your initiative it might drop you below one and in that case of course you're rolling really low. That would be an example of it. If you should ever have a step below one, then you're automatically considered to have, have rolled a one on your test. Effectively, you get the exact minimum on your test automatically if your step is below one. Otherwise, you roll it and it's going to be arranged from highest to lowest, and that's going to be the order. The highest will take whatever action they declared first, giving all the details, making all the proper tests, making all the roles, figuring out all the results of it, and you move down the list, down of course to whoever is at the bottom in this case. Now in the result of one or more creatures getting the same number, well then you start comparing information about them. First off, it's entirely up to the GM, the exact nature of this comparison and figuring out which one goes before the other. It could be circumstantial that they believe that whatever is going on in the game world is the reason for these two, that this one might act first. They could do something like compare dexterity, whoever has the highest dexterity. 
Whoever has the highest initiative test ultimately will be up to the GM to determine this. Though it is important to note, if this tie is between a player character and a GM character, the player character always goes first, since this is a heroic story, the heroes always get to go first in this situation. And of course this is mentioning that the GM will roll for everything under their control. So everything that is not a player in the course of this initiative and this combat, the GM is going to be rolling for it. Now the thing is with the GM is they could have a lot more characters than just a player with a single character apiece, especially if you're fighting a big horde of creatures. This could be very daunting if you're rolling each of them individually. What a GM can do, which is an option I would recommend, is for every group of creatures that are effectively the same. Similar creatures with similar initiatives. You could roll them all together. Roll once. So I have a bunch of minions, like four or five of them, I could roll them all at once, and then their boss, which might have a different initiative step, I could roll that separately. So I only have to roll twice, and I've got my group of six, let's say, taken care of, and I only had to do two rolls. Well, if I did them all individually, I have to get six different rolls, and that can be daunting. That could be time-consuming, and you don't want to waste a lot of time when you're doing any of this kind of setup. You want to make it as efficient as possible. So, that's it for today. I began talking more about combat. I went over the basic idea of combat. I went over what your round will be. That you have the six second rounds that you're going to be taking, the turns between all the players that your various actions are going to be taking place in. I went over the basic procedure that you're going to declare your actions, make your initiative test, resolve your actions, and then of course start a new round. I then start going into the steps there even more in depth, I kind of dive deeper into them, talking about what it means to declare your action, that you're not really going into all the details, you're just generally declaring, I'm doing this. I'm not trying to be as detailed as possible now, I'm just giving like, I'm going to be swinging my sword this round. Okay, that's not what I'm declaring. It's like, I'm ready to hit with melee, I'm ready to cast a spell. Just keeping it general. Then I dived into the quagmire, which is negative. Well, slight quagmire. There are some details to it that are important for the GM to know. What happens in the case of ties? What happens in case someone's modified below one, not voluntarily? What happens when you have a whole lot of characters that GM has to control? So you see, the player's part of this is really simple for rolling initiative. They roll an initiative step, call it a day. Whatever they get, highest to lowest, they determine order. It's the little details the GM has to do, like when, I, example, when I was saying they're the tie, where you have to determine who goes first. It's important that the GM's ready there to fix all these little problems and to make the initiative smooth, top to bottom smooth. In the next episode, we are going to finish up talking about a little bit more details in the rest of those steps on what it means to resolve your actions and to start a new round and start talking about the actions that you're going to be taking themselves, diving in what it means to do these actions and a lot more of the rules based upon them. So we are going to be diving deeper into combat in the next one. But if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share. And subscribe at your support of the channel, The Empire, The Work I Do. If you want to show some extra support, you could always check out my Patreon, link in the description below. I got some great rewards, and it does help out the channel to grow. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.